Anya Carrero is an award member of the Laguna Pueblo and is equally proud of her Hopi, Lakota, and Seneca ancestry. Uh, she grew up dancing at powwows and ex experiencing her father and his traditional uh, drumming group and celebrating their shared culture. Her grandfather is a talented uh, Kachina uh, creator, and she is grateful uh, to be raising her three children in a setting that allows them great access to and influence from their elders. Uh, Anya is a is a 2014 uh, graduate of AZYLF Youth Leadership Forum, a 17, uh, 2017 graduate of the Arizona Youth Engagement Academy, uh, is the past chair of the Arizona Youth Leadership Initiatives and Alumni Association, and in inaug the inaugural secretary of the Diversability Incorporated uh, Board of Directors, Anya is an experienced uh, is an experienced self advocate and skilled peer navigator, and has a and an accomplished trainer, presenter, and person centered planning facilitator. Anya is the 2017 uh, recipient of the National Advocates in Disability Award and the 2019 recipient for the Marcus Harris Junior Leadership Award. If you would like to <laughs> elaborate any further, Anya? All right, awesome. So again, my name is Anya Carrillo. I am so glad to be able to present to you guys today. Um, today, I'm going to be talking about Young Advocate, Big Voice. It's a story um, about how proud our answer ancestors are to be of us. It's a story about my life, but also an interactive presentation as well. So I will be asking some questions and um, I would really like some um, responses and um, some engagement with my presentation as well. So I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Anya Carrillo. I am 26 years old and I'm from the Phoenix areas, um, area. I am Hopi, Laguna, Lakota, and Seneca, but I am registered under the Laguna tribe. My so'o is from the Hopi and Seneca tribe and my papa is from the Laguna and Lakota side, um, or tribes. <laughs> I would just love to go around. I know we did introductions in the um, chat, so I, um, I'm i probably not gonna go around since there are like 115 of us here today, but I would love to get to know some of you. So when we do participate in my um, presentation, I would just love to have um, a few of us speak if you are comfortable with that. Um, so what are some things that we're wanting to learn today? If a few of you want to go ahead and talk about what you are excited to learn from us today, um, that would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to call somebody out. I cannot see the chat or anything. My computer isn't allowing me to see any of the Zoom chats. So if you wanna just un, um, unmute yourselves and speak, that would be great. Hi, Anya. Uh, we do have someone post in the chat. Um, Katrina says, new words and phrases. New words and phrases, that's a good one. And if anyone doesn't feel comfortable with speaking verbally, please type your responses in the chat and I'll read them. Yes, thank you. Betty uh, commented, I'm looking forward to hearing your story. I've known you since 2014 and you have really bloomed. 
Thank you. I'm excited to share it. <laughs> All right. Nadia says, being a better support for youth. And then Tona, did you, I can unmute you if you'd like to speak. Just type in the chat, yes or no. <laughs> If you'd like to speak also, you can raise your hand. Hi, this is Tana Treetop. Thank you for unmuting me. Um, Anya, so my question that or what I would like to learn or know is just from the youth who are attending the summit today, um, what is it that the adults in your, your circle, your support circle, what is it that they can do to help you be successful and support you, you know, as you look back on your life, you know, who was it that did what that, you know, helped you to be where you're at today? Awesome. Thank you so much, Tona. I will definitely have, that. Oh, sorry. We have one more person. I'm going to ask you to unmute Lavona. Okay. Um, hello. So um, I've actually learned a lot already. And um, especially from Stephen sharing his story um, about perseverance and just focusing on his studies and accomplishing, you know, his goals. Um, it has helped me to also persevere with my studies. Um, actually, um, <clears throat> recovering from just different um, obstacles and challenges and just learning to focus and to um, eventually um, graduate and get my master's in about four months. <laughs> So, you know, just listen to his story um, has helped me to persevere, to believe in myself, to realize that, hey, I've done, I've gone through struggles <laughs> and um, I can, you know, uh, accomplish the things that I set out to accomplish. And um, I also just love um, Native American, indigenous people. One of my best friends is a mix of African-American and indigenous. She's such a, I mean, I can't even describe the love she has for me and the support she has been giving me. Um, just a great, great person. So, I'm just, you know, grateful to be here and to learn as much as I can. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So I would like to continue um, on just because we do have limited time today and I have a pretty long presentation and we're going to still have some input in between our my presentation as well. I also wanted to add that I am a mother of three beautiful children, uh, Marceline, Judah, and Soraya. So that's something I pride myself on. Another thing I want to talk about is how I am more than just my disability. I am a mother, I am a daughter, I am a grandchild, I am someone who has a career goal, I am someone who is proud to be Indigenous, um, I'm proud to, of my culture and my identity, so that's something that I really want to um, enhance in my, um, in my presentation today. Um, so going on, we're going to talk about advocacy a little bit. Um, so what is it? What is advoca advocacy? Can I get three people today to just um, tell me what you think advocacy is in your own words? I have a hand raised from uh, mm -hmm. Lafayette Williams, so I'm going to ask him to unmute. Thank you. Hi, my name. Uh -oh. One second. 
Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. You can hear me? Yes? Yes, yes we can hear you. Okay, good, because I didn't have my... Okay, um, well, I actually had my hand raised for something else, but I can answer this question too as well. Um, I work for West New York Independent Living Services in uh, Buffalo, New York, and, and I advocate a lot for... Um, I have a grant through New York State that uh, services all Senecas have a disability. And I also wear two hats. I work for New York Connects. So advocacy is like when you're basically um, breaking down layman's terms. You know, you're sticking up for somebody or for what you believe in, or you're, you're helping somebody. Uh, say they go to a doctor's appointment and they really don't understand the, the language that the doctor's saying. So then you, you know, you go like, say my mom goes there, and I ask him to like break it down layman's terms, like big words, advocate for. Her. And ask questions because you know she's the type that doesn't want to you know just wants to get in there and get out or she just doesn't understand what's going on and she'll just walk away and in, in that sense I'll advocate for her what exactly is it that she has what does she have to do how does she get better that type of thing I have a niece who's in high school I advocate for her I work with students who have disabilities as well in all the schools and surrounding areas so that's my somewhat definition of ad advocacy does that answer your question. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Can I ask you one more question? <laughs> yeah, I'm from Buffalo, New York, but we're, and I'm Seneca, so I saw Seneca. That was my original question on the end of your book. Mm -hmm. uh, and you're Seneca? Yes, my um, grandmother is Seneca. All right. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Now I. All right. Do we have anyone else who wants to chime in what they believe advocacy is to them? Yeah, uh, we have Anna in the chat. Advocacy for me is when we help a fantastic person to find the resources that are available to be more independent for him or herself and to others. Awesome. And then Betty says the word comes from a Latin word that means to speak, and it means speaking for oneself or speaking on behalf of someone else. Awesome. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, you guys. So I'm going to go on to the dictionary definition really quickly. So the definition in the dictionary for advocacy is public support for or recommendation of a particular cause or policy. So I did hear a few um, people say that it um, their, their advocacy is supporting others, which is a great way of using advocacy. Um, and then I heard Betty say advocacy is for themselves and others. Um, I really want to highlight that as a young person who grew up um, with a mental health disability, I was not able to advocate for myself. I had no voice. Um, we're going to talk more about that. And um, so my support people, um, they helped me at first gain that voice um, you, for advocacy. I was able to have that support who would help me advocate for myself. That is such an important thing for us and our youth who um, need that extra support. But then there's also self-advocacy, which is um, advocacy for oneself. So you speaking on your behalf, asking for those um, recommendations, those accommodations for yourself. Uh, so how can advocacy help us? What areas in life that um, advocacy can be important? I'm gonna name a few first. Um, I did name a few, I mean. So in school, um, there yeah. are in your home life. I heard um, that it was also used in medical settings, which is oh, an awesome okay. one. Um, so is there anything else that I'm missing out? Does anyone yeah. wanna yeah. add yeah. what areas in life that advocacy can be important to you? Hi, this is Jimmy Warren. And uh, oh, just for other folks that are on, uh, remember to mute just in case you have some background noise. And uh, I wanted to share how I learned to be an advocate when I was just 11 or 12 years old for dad. Uh, before Americans with Disabilities Act, my brother and I would um, uh, be asked my mom to go, my brother, younger brother would go to the front door and I would go to the kitchen of the restaurant, dad likes Sizzler. So we'd go to Sizzler 
So I knew all the kitchens of all the sizzlers in town and uh, red lobsters that he liked as well. So uh, I was advocating for dad so that he could go eat at his favorite restaurants when the front door was not accessible. And they didn't have to be accessible in those days in the 80s and 70s before ADA. So I was an advocate before I even knew what the word was. I was just trying to get my dad into the restaurant so that he could eat with everybody else. And so that was my first uh, experience with advocacy. And boy, did that make, empowered me as a young person to have that confidence. And all I was doing was representing dad, but it really uh, trained me to be an advocate for people that are not included. So thank you so much, uh, Ani. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Jim. Um, that is an awesome, that's actually um, where I was trying to get at. So as a young person, you advocated for your father, but did you know that you grew up and you advocated for yourself from the minute you were born? When you were first born, what happened when you came out of your mother's womb? You were screaming. You were screaming to get back into that warmth, to feel your mother's touch again, to um, be held by the person that you know loved you from the moment you you were born in that tummy. So um, advocacy is from that moment, um, from birth all the way up until we give our last breath. Um, it is very important us, for us to understand and nurture that um, in young people as well. I learned as a mother, I'm a very young mother. Again, I'm only 26 and I have three children, but I learned that my babies needed me from the moment they were born and they were advocating every little cry. Like if you can hear her right now, she's crying. My dad is taking care of her um, right for right now, but she's advocating for her needs. She wants to be held or she needs to be changed or she wants to be fed. And advocacy starts at such a young age and it can be so important for our growth to nurture and develop that advocacy even from the youngest age. My son wants to wear these bright green cowboy boots with shorts and a crazy colored t-shirt. I'm not going to stop him because that's what he's advocating for. He feels comfortable in that outfit. So I'm going to let him nurture that support of our parents um, advocating for people who do not understand what they're going through or what they need. And the parent is unable to really speak for themselves or really help themselves in that moment. That is the best way to use advocacy. So when advocating, who can it benefit? Like I said, again, everyone from the youngest age possible, infants to the um, oldest age possible, adults who need that help and encouragement. One thing I was raised in was to respect my elders, to love on my elders and to help my elders no matter what. I live with my dad and my grandpa and um, we are so close and it's because I learned to respect my elders and help him advocate for himself and help advocate for him when it's needed. So we're gonna move on to my story. Um, I just wanna give a pre-warning um, that my story is kind of big, it's big, it's huge. Um, so it does come with a lot of bounds. Um, it might be a little sad. If you need to step away, please do so. Um, I, I just want to give that pre-warning because I know I'm going to cry. Um, I might cry. I'm hoping I won't. <laughs> I practiced a few times to like get my emotions together and be able to be strong enough to present in front of you guys. Um, I want to say that I have done my story several times and it's still sometimes hard for me to speak about, especially with some of the new things that have arose. So um, just that for that pre-warning. <laughs> I was very happy that we were able to go around and talk about advocacy and what it means to us. I'm now going to go talk about a bit why I wanted to start with so many questions and really dig into the word advocacy. So before I even be, was able to help myself and use my voice and um, use advocacy to the best was understanding the definition of advocacy advocacy and really digging deep into that word advocacy because without that knowledge we don't really understand or realize that we are advocating or when we need that help to advocate for ourselves so that's what I wanted to do first off was go ahead and talk about that and get that 
settled because my story is about how I learned to use my voice and um, use my tools, advocacy, self-determination, person-centered planning, all of that in becoming who I am today. All right, a few pictures. Um, so this is me and my sister, Taya. Um, we were at a powwow in, I believe this was Muckleshoot, yes, up in Washington, Muckleshoot powwow. Um, this just shows our personality <laughs> as young kids. Um, I'm to the left in the purple and blue regalia. Um, it was my Southern traditional regalia, hand beaded um, necklace, choker with hand beaded um, hair ties, our feathers. My sister's in a beautiful bright red and orange jingle dress. And she has some hand beaded hair ties as well and a beautiful feather on top with some of our uh, more traditional um, regalia, including the mink. Um, on the right hand side, we have a, just a funny photo of me and my sister. This is our goofball um, energy. <laughs> um, I'm making a silly face. So is my sister. We're all crouched down and just um, being silly because that was a big part of who we were growing up. Um, another photo of me and my sister. Um, I'm on the left with a beautiful beautiful beaded crown, um, a plume feather, and then as well as my hair and braids, my little glasses, and again, my purple and blue regalia. My sister again in the red and orange regalia to the right, and she has beautiful beaded jewelry as well, um, and a big plume feather as well. This was at the Gathering of Nations. One thing I loved doing growing up was being able to dance, um, attend powwows. My dad sang with, um, he sang with a, a lot of Midnight Express. He sang with, um, uh, what, Southern, Southern, Northern Cree. Uh, he did sing with, no, he was a Southern drummer. So he sang with a lot of Southern drums. Um, and so we were able to attend and um, dance at Powell. is one of our favorite things to do every summer. All right. So going on, um, growing up with no voice, um, I grew up in a very unabusive um, childhood. My mother, um, who... Um, raised us was more abusive than I really realized growing up. And um, we did not have ability to speak. We didn't have an ability to say what we needed. And we had no ability um, to advocate for ourselves as young children. Um, that's me on the um, bottom in a pink blouse and just smiling as best as I could. Um, this abuse started when we were very little, um, started with my dad. Um, she would be very abusive towards him, abusive towards me and my sister. Um, and it grew into a lot more. Um, I was 12 years old when our family split apart and the abuse transferred from my dad onto me. Um, we still attended powwows. There were still blankets around our home. Um, I call them blankets. They're like shields to protect that we were never really abused. Um, there were things we weren't allowed to talk about, things we weren't allowed to say. Our voices were cut off immediately when we would try to say anything. Um, once I was 12 years old, I understood that um, this wasn't okay, that what we experienced was not okay. So I did everything in my power to voice my concerns with people. Where was my voice? Um, it was lost. <laughs> it I needed to understand my needs. At the age of 15, that's when I first spoke out about my abuse. And in... Um, in hand with that, I was then diagnosed with a mental health disability. Um, my mother, who um, got me diagnosed with several disabilities, created medical abuse. Um, told very 
different stories of who I was and who I was um, understood to be. I had no way to advocate myself once I was put on medication. I was 15 and on like 25 different medications for different mental health disabilities that I did not indeed have. I um, was then zombified, <laughs> as I call it, by these medications, which shut down my voice even more. At the age of 17, I became um, very aware of what was going on, but then I shut down. I didn't want to speak about it any longer. I didn't want to get the help I needed. I was very scared of what was going to happen to me um, because I didn't, I knew if I spoke and if I spoke way too often, I could no longer, I would probably no longer be able to speak. So, um, in, in 2014, when I was 17 years old, my teacher, who was one of the biggest supports at that time, he um, got in contact with me and he's like, hey, I really think you should be a part of this program. I think it would be really great for you. You're already a leader here in this classroom. I really do think that we should get you involved. So we started the process um, without my mother's knowledge at first, but then it had to get past my mother because we had to ask for permission to get to it. Um, and I applied for 2014 Arizona Youth Leadership Forum. It was the first year that it was happening. It was the um, it was so exciting for me. I was super excited to get out. And of course, my mom was gung ho because one of her things was to send us off to places as much as she could. So we were at summer camps all the time or um, in hospitals so that we we weren't around her much. So when she heard about Arizona Youth Leadership Forum, she was good. She was like, okay, let's do it. What she didn't realize was that this was going to be my biggest tool and my biggest um, advocacy like step up. Um, I started to understand after this, after AZYLF, I started to understand that I needed to speak up before I could no longer stand up. So how could I do this with no practice and support? I was applying for this. I needed to um, get out of this situation. I needed to get us help. I needed to make sure that me and my sister were safe. I needed to make sure that um, we were going to be okay. So I had to understand my needs. In the right corner is a 2017 Advocates and Disability Award reception photo. I was up at a podium speaking, holding a microphone, and um, this is one of, um, of the awards that I have gotten um, for using my advocacy <laughs> skills. So the way to my voice, how did I finally find my voice? I was 17 and finally finding my voice. After so many years of trauma and abuse and neglect and all of this, I found my voice. I was accepted into AZYLF and that's when I met my support. Um, the way I was introduced into advocacy. Like Stephen had said, um, we were taught how to person-centered plan. We were taught how to advocate for ourselves. We, get, we were given resources. I found my voice and I was able to finally understand what I was going through was not normal, that I needed the help to get out, that I wanted to advocate for myself. I was on fire. I was super excited to finally understand and realize, okay, Anya, this is how you do it. Um, at the bottom is a photo of uh, all of, a lot of us, there's Steven at the bottom. I see Mateo. I see Adrian. We'll get to meet him in the afternoon as well, I believe. Um, there's a bunch of uh, people. That's my support system. That's not all of them, but that's a big support system that I had. Um, the people who helped me. We were talking about um, supporters and who it is that can help us in ways that are um, meaningful to our advocacy skills. And, and that is what you need. You need a group of people who will guide you along, give you those resources, teach you about advocacy, really go into depth about that word advocacy and un have us understand what it means to be an advocate.
Oh, some photos of me and Melly at April conference. Um, this was a big conference that I presented at. Um, very exciting. Um, very, I, it's one of the biggest opportunities I was able to obtain, uh, um, obtain to. All right, so talking about it, I finally found my voice and it was big. It was huge. It had a huge impact on my life, a huge positive impact in my life. I spoke out and I got out. In 2000, I believe it was 15 or 16, my mom had taken me to a rehab center. I had never um, done any thing to get myself into a rehab center and it was in Utah. Um, I was scared. I was alone. I was kicked out. <laughs> I had three days to um, find a solution to get home, either that or find some place to go next. Um, I was stranded. I didn't know what to do. And um, I prayed for the first time in forever. Um, after I prayed, I finally just looked at a resource sheet trying to find out how am I going to get home? What am I going to do? What's the next steps? At this point, I hadn't talked to my dad since I was 16 years old. I was now 18 years old. I had no idea where he was. I didn't know any of my family from my dad's side. I was cut off from them from the age 12. Um, I didn't know how to get in contact with them. I looked at the resource paper and I noticed, wow, that phone number looks very familiar. Um, it looked like a family number growing up. What if I try it with a 602 area code? Because again, I was in Utah. I didn't know where I was. Uh, I, I didn't realize that it was so important for me to call that number. I called it with a 602 area code and my soul answered the phone. Um, she answered the phone, my soul, my grandma. She told me, Anya, where are you? Where have you been? Are you okay? Um, she She's a chatty one for sure. She was very chatty, um, <laughs> asked me all these questions, told me all these um, stories about things. And I said, Grandma, so oh, I really need to talk to my dad. Do you know where he is? And she's like, yes, he's right here. <laughs> Oh, I said, oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Can I please talk to him? She asked, what's going on, honey? What's going on? What do, what do you need? What do you need? And I said, I'm in Utah and I don't know how to get home. I said, I found your number on a piece of paper. She said, you found our number on a piece of paper. And I didn't know how to explain it because my head was all fuzzy. I was feeling so weird. I was stressed out and I was scared. I told my dad, I said, dad, I need help. I know we haven't talked since I was 16 years old. And of course, the moment I said that, my soul chimes in. <laughs> she goes, Gary, we need to help her now. You need to help her now. <laughs> Not realizing that there needs to be some planning into this because I had three days to get out of Utah to go home. That's when the miracle happened. Two days Um it took two days for my whole family to come together, get the funds that they needed um, to fly my dad out there to grab me and then get us on a great home back home. I'm sorry. <laughs> two days. Um. I advocated for myself. I used my big voice. I did something that I was scared to do. I had no understanding why that phone number was on that paper. And I know that it was because my God and my ancestors were looking after me. They knew I needed help. And I was shown help through that finding on that paper. My family, who loved me dearly no matter what, came to my rescue. <laughs> they got me home and I was safe. I was finally safe. I found my family. I found my way to be free from the abuse 
and I was finally free and it was because I did use my big voice. I used those advocacy skills that I learned from AZYLF. I told the doctors what happened. I told them exactly what happened. They, even though it was scary to have three days, they helped me get out. I was home. I was safe. And I was able to move on. My dad, from the moment I got home, told me I needed to be off those medications. And of course, I thought I had some sort of disability that I needed to stay on the medications. At that point, I was brainwashed into thinking I had what I was told I had. My dad said, no, honey, you need to get off of these medications. Again, I fought him. No, dad, I need to be on them. My dad advocated for me. My dad used his voice, told my doctor what happened, and they saw that I wasn't, I didn't need to be on these medications. My doctor slowly tampered me off of these medications, got me back to where I was. And of course, the medications had reverse side effects on me because I did not have the disabilities that I was said to have. After I had gotten off of these medications, they finally tampered me all the way off of my medications. I was free. The chains that held me back, the uh, things that kept me from living my life, I was finally free. The chains fell off. My ancestors, my God, he helped me. They helped me get out of this situation that I was in. My so'o, my papa, my dad, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, all of them helped me get away from what I thought was going to be the rest of my life. I started doing things more often with Melly. I was asked to go to some of the biggest opportunities I've ever thought of. I traveled to Washington State. This is a photo of me in Spokane. I spoke at a conference there. Um, that's my little boy. <laughs> he was just little in that photo. Um, he was able to come with me on this trip. Um, he's he's traveled. He's done a lot of traveling for himself <laughs> in these trips. Um, I traveled to Kansas City. I had an amazing opportunity out there. I traveled to Washington, D.C. to receive my award. I traveled all around Arizona. Um, once I received the 2017 Advocates and Disability Award, I was um, able to go um, back home. And um, one of my biggest accomplishments um, for my soul was to um, work with Native youth on the Hopi and Navajo Reservation and um, bring them resources and um, um, bring them my knowledge um, and Melly's knowledge and um, um, enlighten them on what I feel like advocacy should be and how, how we could help the Native youth up there. Um, I spoke at many conferences. I've gone to Reno, Nevada, Colorado. We've, I've been so many places I forget sometimes. Um, but I spoke about my advocacy skills, spoke about person-centered planning. I've implemented person-centered planning in other youth's lives. I've implemented it in my own life and I have accomplished. I'm a single mother of three beautiful children who help me every single day realize how, what how grateful I am to be where I am today. I have accomplished doing what my soul wanted me to do. Um, sadly, she passed in 2020 uh, from a heart, a heart failure and um, kidney failure. So um, I always think about what she told me. Anya, I want you to go and I want you to tell my, my people, tell my people, Anya, tell them everything that you know about advocacy. Tell them what you told me, Anya, it's important. Remember my cousin, he was in, or my um, uncle, he was in a home for people with disabilities. I don't want that for your people, our people. Let's, let's tell them about this, Anya. Tell them about the accomplishments you've been through. Anya, make me proud. I hold on to that every single day. I'm making my soul proud. I'm making my ancestors proud. And that's something that I really want for our youth. I really want for the people who hear this to go and implement into their lives.
using your voice, using those skills that you will learn, make them into accomplishments because your voice is big. Um, this was at, um, I think this was actually at the Disability Summit, um, the American Indian Disability Summit in 2000. 15 or 16, 17, I think, I believe. Um, I would do things like this with Melly. We'd go set up our stand and talk about our um, youth engagement and youth initiatives. Um, so that was some of more of my accomplishments. And then my soul, oh, this one makes me cry. So I'm sorry if I start crying again. <laughs> um, my soul. Um, my soul is the one who inspired me to work hard and continue to push. To this day, I think of everything I am doing to bright light, bring light and happiness to her. She has now left the earth, and I know she is looking at me proud. Um, this is her accomplishment. <laughs> um, this big family right here. These are all her grandkids, her uh, sons and daughters. She had three sons and um, two daughters. So... Um, the man standing on the right is one of her sons. That's my dad. Um, and then the man standing on the left, that's my um, my uncle Richard. He recently passed as well with his wife and my auntie Nay and auntie Lisa and all their kids and grandkids. So everyone, this is an older photo. So I don't have photos of my kids in here. Um, this was at their wedding anniversary. Um, my so and Papa have been married um, for years. Um, so we were able to get around and get that taken for them. My so and Papa in this photo um, very happy couple. They were married for such a long time. They showed me what it meant to um, be loved and have love. Um, they advocated for me in the times that I needed to have advocacy from someone else that support, again, supporting me in any way possible, listening to me, listening and understanding and embracing what I told them. Um, so huge supports in my life. Oh, well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to me um, about my journey as an advocate, about how I learned to speak up for myself as an advocate and um, learning how to use my support system, um, how my culture and my identity brought me um, back to my family who really embraced that um, the support and um, taught me to love my culture again, to um, be who I was and, and embrace me and love me. Um, if you want, we could go ahead and um, talk about questions. I'm going to log out of this um, just so that we can, I can see everyone and um, talk to you personally. Let me see if I can do it. <laughs> Hi, Anna. This is Kimberly. While you're working on that, I just want to say um, how proud I am of you. Thank I better turn my camera off. <laughs> I've known you for such a long time when you were a little girl and you danced so beautifully and you were so sharing and caring and my daughters danced with you and there was a time when we lost the regalia and you actually gave them a couple sets of yours. I don't even know if you remember that, but yep. I want to tell you, I love you and you're in a safe space and your sharing is very beautiful. I love you, niece. You keep on doing good work out there. A lot. I love you a lot of people are depending on you. I love you, Auntie. Thank you so much. Yes. Does anyone have any questions for me? Or um, do you want me to further talk about anything else? Is there anything that I could do for you guys? Let me open the chat because now I can see that. Thank you guys so much. We, we do have a raised hand from Mabona. I'm gonna ask you to unmute. Yeah, 
it's so good to hear your story, Anya. Um, first of all, I'm thinking you're so young. <laughs> so young. <laughs> it's so brilliant. And um, wow, I put my comment in the chat and it's just, you know, you talked about um, crying and the tears when tears came. I think my tears came before yours. <laughs> um, just hearing you talk about your grandma and I'm learning the name Soyo, so -o. So, oh, yeah. So, oh, okay, that's nice. And um, I love my grandma as well. She passed away last year. So that's when my tears came and just listen to your story and, um, and see the connection and um, just how you believe in prayer and um, you talk about having a big voice. I also have a big voice where sometimes I just need to shut up. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm an advocate as well. Um, I say I advocate for Christ, for God. I truly believe in him and he's the one leading me and his Holy Spirit. And um, just how he has helped you in your life, you know, um, to grow and to speak to the youth and to accomplish all those things. Um, I, think it, I, can, I think I can show my face a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, just all those things that you have accomplished is just really um, admirable. And wow, you have so much more to give. And, you know, you're gonna do a, you're, you're gonna do a great job in life. Just keep on keeping on. Thank you so much. Yeah. So I saw a question from Betty in the chat as well. She said, besides being an advocate, what is your career goal? Um, so right now I work for Carvana. <laughs> it's not something that I want to do forever. Um, I do want to become a bigger advocate in life. I have um, worked very hard um, to become um, a advocate and somebody who can bring motivation to others. I know that my story is big and I can do a lot with what I want to do. I do youth um, who have been through the same traumas I've been through. Um, it's something that I have been, again, like I said, I'm a praying woman, so I pray about things before they happen. So I have been praying about it just because um, I am a single mom with three kids, so I have to really think about that. But I do want to become um, a advocate and even maybe a social worker for youth who are in the same positions that I was as a young adult or a young kid. Thank you guys so much.